Welcome to Maine Concerns, where our news team gives you a closer look at the events that happened around Maine this week. Today we're focusing on a program that offers a variety of mental health and substance abuse services based out of the southern part of the state. But the Day One program also has residence programs in central Maine for teens battling substance abuse, including one that currently has some empty beds, which are normally very tough to come by. I chatted with program director Joanne Grant about the teen residence program on the campus of the Goodwill Hinckley School. What is Day One? So Day One is a mental health and substance abuse agency that services youth and families. We provide a lot of services across the state of Maine. Our hub is down in South Portland. Now, how long ago did the residence at Goodwill Hinkley open? So that is our newest endeavor, actually. We opened in 2014, and I think we are so established down in the southern areas of the state that sometimes up here, really getting our name out there in the northern areas has been difficult. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we have empty beds here that we know there's a need for. So I think that it's really important for everyone to know that there is a program up in Hinkley that is run very similarly to the one down in Hollis and Buxton. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but day one has been providing these services for over 40 years. So this is something, you know, this population and this type of work is something we know really well. So all of the programs are really geared towards helping families and kids have better lives and achieve goals that they need to achieve. So Okay, awesome. Now, what teens benefit from a program like this? There's obviously some criteria that need to be met to qualify to enter a residential program. We provide, you know, obviously, the housing piece, substance abuse treatment groups, individual substance abuse treatment, mental health. They learn independent living skills. They learn to cook and clean and follow a schedule. We also provide a lot of recreational activities so that they learn how to have fun in healthy and sober ways. So the population that we serve, particularly in Hinkley, are adolescent boys ages 14 to 18. And obviously, they to meet the criteria, they need to have had some struggles with substance use disorders. And, you know, that's kind of played out into other areas of their lives. Maybe they've been expelled from school or are having difficulties in school. There's a lot of social pieces that are typically experienced with kids that meet the criteria to be here. Maybe they've had some medical issues, mental health issues related to their substance use disorder. And those are the types of issues that we work on here and the types of kids that begin treatment here have have issues in those areas. Okay. And how do they normally end up in the residence program? Are parents bringing them or is is it a referral from counselors or how does that work? I would say um, you hit most of the referral sources in your question. The bulk of our referral sources come from the Department of Corrections. So as I just mentioned, there are a lot of problems these kiddos are experiencing. It's not just the substances. It's trickling into all areas of their life. So unfortunately, they've ended up in the criminal justice system due to their choices. So I want to say about 80% of our referrals come from probation officers. And then, of course, families are, are typically aligned with the probation officer's decision to have a kid enter treatment here. So that's how Helpful. There are families that have clients that aren't involved in Department of Corrections that make referrals here as well. And as you mentioned, other private counselors or counseling agencies or schools can make referrals here and happen to be a great provider of referrals for us as well. Okay. And do they go to school while they're there? Yes. I'm sorry. I did forget to mention that. That's all right. a huge part of what they do here. They actually go to school right in our home. There's a lower level that has desks and the teachers are there, and chalkboards and everything a a typical school would have, and they go to school from 9 o'clock in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon with a couple of breaks for treatment groups and lunch. But, yeah, Monday through Friday, they go to school. It's a huge protective factor for kids that are leaving our program is to have their education in place or to have recuperated some credits they might have lost while they were struggling with their substance use issues. Awesome. All right. Now, I know a lot of these programs, the traditional programs that you hear about are 12-step programs. I looked at your website and I saw that there are the seven challenges. Can you briefly give me an idea what the seven challenges are? I sure can. You did your homework. I really (laughs) like that. Um, So yeah, you know, adolescent programs, we do have a 12-step component. We have a, a provider come in and do a house meeting for the kiddos here. And then once they reach a certain place in their treatment, they're allowed to go out into the community several times a week and participate in a 12-step program of their choice. And for those that remain engaged and interested in the 12-step model, we certainly help connect 
them with sponsors and outside meetings once they leave here as part of their transition plan. Having said that, the treatment model that we use here is seven challenges. It's an evidence-based model, which, you know, that's a little uh, catchphrase that people like to hear, meaning that it's been researched and validated as an effective program that helps kids graduate the program in maintain some of the goals they've achieved when they're outside of this program. And what it is is a decision-making model. So, you know, if you are a client coming into this program, you'd be expecting that you're going to get here and have someone, you know, being really confrontational with you and telling you the dangers of drugs and how they're bad and you really need to quit and, you know, what you need to do to be successful. And that's quite the opposite of what we do here. And I think the, the trend, you know, even in outpatient programs and other types of programs is not that. We kind of work collaboratively with the adolescent to see what it is that they want to work on and help build motivation at the same time to maybe make changes in their substance use disorder. Believe it or not, a lot of kids enter residential treatment and they don't want to be here. (laughs) And they don't think their substance use is a problem, even though they've met this really stringent criteria that I mentioned to you. So it's a decision-making model and it's a real collaborative approach in helping them make changes. And it might not be, you know, the changes we all in the public think they need to make with complete abstinence, but we do see kids make a lot of progress with this model and it can easily be carried out into other treatment programs. So it involves an interactive journaling. They have, you know, the challenges. There are seven challenges and they can interactively journal with their clinician and then there's some groups that have a certain structure and relate things back to the challenges that they outline. So it's, it's a great model. Wonderful. And it has great success from the sound of it. It does. And that's one of the reasons why day one, you know, it can be kind of a lot in regard to training and startup and the materials and, and whatnot, but it's really worth it. And that's right. why day one, you know, kind of adopted it as our one of our major approaches in treatment. Okay. How long generally are they in residence? Is, is there a, a set amount of time or just as long as they need? Yeah. So study and research show, you know, differing opinions on how long somebody really needs to be in a, a program like this and how effective it can be. And we have a six-month program here. So all of the things that I told you about with seven challenges and community reintegration and the 12-step piece is really based on a six-month program. So if kids are here for six months and they're completing their goals and making progress, then they graduate the program. So of course, there are clients in between that feel like maybe a couple months is enough for them and they don't want to be here any longer or that they met their goals in that amount of time. So basically kids who aren't mandated by probation to be here don't usually stay for six months, but that is what's encouraged and that's what our program's built around. Okay. And what happens when they leave? Is there a, is there a follow-up? Do they have still have interaction with the program? What happens? That is our recommendation. So we track the clients that graduate or complete our program for 18 months. And of course, that doesn't always, every client doesn't stay in touch with us for 18 months, obviously. Recidivism and relapse is a factor in this disease. And and sometimes we don't hear from kids if they're doing poorly or even if they're doing well because they've started their lives and, and they really don't need to connect with us as much. But typically, we track them for 18 months. And at the beginning, it's it's more frequent. It's weekly. And then, you know, months and that look like a phone check-in where we're seeing how they're doing, if their needs are being met, if they need anything. But it can also look like sessions, especially down in the southern area of the state where they're a lot closer in proximity to some of the clients who leave. The counselors still meet with them as needed and often can bring them back to the house for certain events and have them kind of give back to the community that they graduated from uh, if they're doing well and, and achieving their goals outside. So we do track them for a period of time. And that's in addition to making appropriate referrals when they leave. So we obviously refer them to any more family counseling that they might require or um, individual substance abuse counseling, mental health services, things like that. Mm -hmm. We try to wrap them up nice and tight when they get (laughs) out into the community. Grant says most needed in the state right now are more programs that help those teens continue with their recovery after they leave the residence facility. For more information, log on to day-one.org. I'm Cindy Campbell. Thanks again for joining us. Join us again next weekend for Main Concerns with your Town Square Media News Team.